So, you're playing D&D 5e in Foundry. You've given a character a class from the provided class items, and everything is going great. But suddenly, you find yourself needing a feature that doesn't exist within the SRD compendiums provided by the system. Since those features don't come with the system, how do you go about making it yourself? Thankfully with Foundry, it's simple and easy. Let's take a look. First, head over to the Items tab of the right-hand sidebar. Click Create New Item at the top. You should first name the feature you'll be creating. For this example, we'll create the Hand of Healing feature from the Way of Mercy Monk subclass from Tasha's. Since this is a subclass feature, set the item's type to Feature in the drop-down menu, and then go ahead and click Create New Item. Now that you've created the item, you have a few fields that you can fill in or skip if you want to. If we hover over the blank description field, we can click on the Edit button to input the descriptive text of the feature. I own Tasha's on D&D Beyond, so I'm going to copy and paste it in. You can press Control shift v to paste the text without formatting, Command shift v on Mac. You can click on the white bag icon to change the picture you want the feature to have. Now, let's set up the actual mechanics of the feature. Go into the Details tab of the item. This starts off very simple. First things first, we know that this feature takes one action to complete, so we'll set the activation cost to one action. You'll see that a bunch of new fields just popped up when we changed the action type. Most of these are for your convenience, and you can skip them if you don't find them necessary, but they are helpful to fill out, especially if you plan on using macros or modules that will reference these fields. For this example, Hand of Healing targets one creature, has a range of touch, and has a duration of instantaneous. You might see the Limited Uses field and be tempted to fill it in, since this ability consumes key points, but Let's take a look at how the key feature is set up on the provided monk class first. By doing this, we can create our new feature in a way that works well with the existing class features, and we want everything to work together as nicely as possible. As you can see here, the key feature that comes already set up in the monk class tracks the limited uses of key for us automatically, and even scales with the character's monk level. So, for our hand of healing feature, we should instead set it to consume one use of this key feature that already exists. Since the Hand of Healing feature isn't currently on the character sheet, it's still in the sidebar, it doesn't know the key feature exists quite yet, so we can't reference it. So we'll revisit this field at the very end of this process. For now, set the resource consumption to item uses, skip the second field for the time being, and set the last field to 1. Let's move on to the Feature Attack section. Here, we can set the type of action this feature is, and Hand of Healing is a healing feature. Once again, many more fields just popped up for us, so let's go through them one at a time. The Ability Modifier field determines which ability score the feature will reference. Since Hand of Healing adds the Wisdom modifier, we'll set this to Wisdom. Beneath that is the Healing formula. Go ahead and click the plus icon to add a Healing formula. Hand of Healing rolls one Martial Arts die and adds the character's Wisdom modifier. At level 3, a Monk's Martial Arts die is 1d4. So we could just put 1d4 plus at mod into the field. The at mod references the ability modifier that we just set, which is the wisdom modifier in this case, and set the damage type to healing. While this works perfectly fine in most cases, for this case in particular, there's actually a better way to do this. Since the monk's martial arts die scales with the character's monk level and is not a permanent value, you would have to edit this feature manually every time the die changed to a d6 or a d8, etc. But as of the latest 5e system version, this can be adjusted automatically for you. But how do we do that? Go over to your monk and find the monk class item in the features tab. Edit the class item and go over to the advancement tab. Enable configuration in the top left. Here, you can see a breakdown of everything the monk class provides at various levels, including the martial arts die scaling value. Let's go into the details of that advancement and see what's inside. As you can see here, you can reference this scaling die type by typing at scale.monk.die. This references the scaling values you see here on the right, such as d4, d6, etc. So we can use this in our formulas to automatically use the correct dice. So with that, we can disable the configuration and close this out. And then let's go back to our hand of healing feature. Instead of 1d4, we can type 1 at scale.monk.die. We have to add the 1 in front of it to tell it to only roll one die, 
since the scaling feature only specifies the die type and not the number of dice, which is different from something like the sneak attack dice scaling, which does specify the number. Perfect. Now, the die that this feature rolls will scale properly as the monk levels up. Please note, however, that the feature can only reference this scaling value if the monk class is part of the same character sheet. Without the monk class, it will have no idea what to reference and won't roll properly. Since this feature doesn't have any other damage formulas or a saving throw, we can ignore the rest of these fields. This feature is pretty much done. You can close the item window once you're finished. All that's left to do is add the new feature to our monk by just dragging and dropping. Now that the feature is on our character sheet properly, we can do that last bit of setup to have it automatically consume a key point. Edit the item on the character sheet specifically with this button here. And go back to the details tab. Under resource consumption, change the second dropdown to the key feature. If you don't see anything here, then you need to make sure that the key item is on the monk sheet or some other feature that has limited uses. And just like that, we're already done. Let's go ahead and roll this to see if it works. And as you can see, as soon as we use it, it consumes one of our key points here. And when we roll the healing, we properly get 1d4 plus our wisdom modifier of healing. Since Hand of Healing can also be used during a flurry of blows for free, the player can simply uncheck this box when they roll it to prevent it from consuming the key. And if we level up our monk and roll the feature again, you can see that the formula automatically updated to 1d6 since the martial arts die increased. Pretty cool stuff. And that is the basics of creating custom features for D&D 5e in Foundry. This basic workflow applies to any custom features, items, or monsters you may want to add to your game. So go ahead, get out there, and create all the features your heart desires.